Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community nerf news. I'm Adriana, and I don't think we're talking about anything Hasbro based today. Neat. Adrian Kelly told us there are glue changes in the worker darts. We did some testing with a small sample, and after firing the same 15 darts five times, we only had one decapitation. While with the older style, all 15 have been decapitated within the first three firings from the same blaster. So, looks like it's true. But that's not the biggest news. Worker is also releasing a new version of Dart. I believe we're calling this one Gen 3. Uh, they're being hand cut, so the edges of the foam should be straighter, and there is a new head design. It's injection molded from the tip, so they're claiming it'll be more uniform. The step design is keeping that gap that we're used to, and apparently it's lighter than the previous generations. These darts will also feature the new glue. So whether we use the newer Gen 2 or the Gen 3 dart, I am really looking forward to them keeping their heads on. The schedule for Endwar has been officially announced, so we know when to beware and what's going on. The most important things to take away is that FoamCon starts Friday at 10. Seriously, this is a must-see event. If you skip it, you are truly missing out. The opening ceremony for Endwar is at 6 p.m. and flows right into Mission 1. On Saturday, there's HVZ all day from 10 to 8, and then registration for the Foam Pro Tour players is early, early Sunday at 7.30 a.m., with official matches starting at 9. Speaking of the Foam Pro Tour, all of the spots have finally been filled and the groups have been announced. So who are you cheering for? Say Dauntless. I'm on Dauntless. I want Dauntless to win. Jamie Heston of Heston Systems and lead organizer of Ragnar Oktoberfest has successfully founded Foam War and is the treasurer. I'm also on the board as well as another local from the Bay Area, Eileen Chung. Foam War is a 501c3 nonprofit company which will be the official host of Ragnar Oktoberfest and other possible future events. What does this mean for you? Not much, except for the fact that all donations to the organization are now tax deductible. Foam War is hoping to give West Coast clubs an avenue towards more legitimate renting of venues that prefer to rent to nonprofits only. We've got big things in the works, and we can't wait to see all of you at Ragfest and other West Coast events. People have been talking about the Daybreak system for a while now, but it's always seemed to become unavailable right before we do a segment on it. At the time of filming, metal Daybreak cages and wheels are available at Curry Cafe. It's a system similar to Eclipse, but more accessible in some ways. The wheels have very high concavity to surround the dart and a special, higher than typical crush cage to compensate for that. Kuriaka claims to get around 150 FPS on his 41mm daybreak cage using Michel 2.0s. And the gap between the flywheels is actually forgiving enough to be able to use FVJs and the Vauberries that some clubs have floating around in their bins. The ability to get that kind of performance with cheap motors and without the worry of accidentally destroying your blaster with a hard tip is awesome. If 150 isn't good enough for you, he says you can get closer to 200 FPS running his 40mm cage with some torqueier motors. However, I don't believe that setup will allow for the stray hard tip dart. We will be testing this eventually, and it's been on our bench for a while, but that is a whole different video. For now, the link to Kuriaka's Etsy store and Thingiverse page is in the description. Project Farm is a channel that Michelle watches pretty often. While it's not really nerf specific, we feel like his most recent video is incredibly useful for our hobby. He tackles the insane task of testing multiple hot glue brands to figure out which is best. We were shocked to see he was ripping the grain off the wood before the hot glue was failing. One of the brands fared so well, it made us question all of the times we've told people not to use hot glue for things. I doubt anyone would have figured hot glue would be capable of holding shear forces over a thousand pounds. Some of the tests even surpassed the results he got testing the holding force of nails. He's got a ton of really good content like testing multiple epoxies that might be of interest to people in our hobby, so consider this a long overdue shout out. He's constantly improving his testing methods and doing his best to make sure that he's as accurate as possible. Sild was one of, if not the first, to bring MOSFET boards to the community, and now he's pushing the envelope again. He's got a line of modular boards available to help you tech out your blaster. Want to vary the speed of your flywheels? He's got a board for that. 
Want to run a solenoid and switch between semi and full auto fire modes? He's got a board for that. He even has a board coming for rapid strike pushers that'll allow for some snappy fire control. There's a lot of neat possibilities with these boards and we can't wait to see all the smart blasters you all make with them. They're available now in his web store, so pop on over there and grab some smart flywheel tech. Also check out the tools section of his website. He's got some lipo battery and motor tools that should help you pick the right parts for your next sealed build. I know we promised the files for the perfect fit in Hurricane Cages would be released a while ago, but unfortunately Michelle was far too busy with end war and wedding preparations to get them listed. But now, they are live on our website under the 3D Files section. We will no longer be posting files to Thingiverse due to rampant license violations that seem to happen. Michelle was tired of trying to fight every single Etsy and eBay seller who thinks a non-commercial license means nothing, so now they're hosted on our site. Accessing the 3D Files section does require you to agree to the terms of the non-commercial license. We currently only have the Worker Hurricane cages and the Perfect Fit files, including the Yoink adapter and the Experimental Worker removal tool listed. Any new designs we decide to release will only be available through our website. We're sorry for anyone who prefers Thingiverse, but the site has become unusable with bots crawling the site and adding designs to web stores. But hey, at least it's still free. This week's mod of the week is from Austin Darius on Nerf Modders Welcome. He created the Night Mouser. The dart holders on the Nightfinder are pretty useless, so to see it repurposed into a magwell, that's awesome. You need to prime both the breech and the spring separately, but it's still faster than single loading or ramrodding. 130 with worker darts isn't too shabby either. I'm always impressed by brass breeches because it's really hard for me. I tried a couple of times, but it never came out great. I love that he was able to find a new use for an older blaster, and I'm hoping that he releases a build guide because it's really cool and I want to see more of them around. The video of the week is pretty much a trailer for the Milwaukee-based group Mono. The cinematography is really interesting. There's sweeping shots of the staging area with everyone loading up for the next match, some third-person gameplay, first-person gameplay, and my favorite part, at a minute 25, a stormtrooper getting an awesome slide tag on a melee player. I'd love to see similar types of videos from more clubs because it shows how exciting Nerf is and it's always good to get a spotlight on your club and increase your member count. This video really makes me look forward to playing in my next game because I freaking love playing. Thank you for tuning in to This Week in Nerf. Come back next week, Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And if you want to see more from Foam Blast, Click that subscribe button and maybe the bell so you get a notification. Leave a comment to say that you love Terrence the Dinosaur. Also, Adriana forgot the accent that Terrence normally uses, so this is weird. Bye! Who took my place?